It's day 109. Big Bertha here hasn't grown any taller in the center, but the smaller plants have grown a little bit. I just took the pot indoors and put it on a table for a better look at these mushrooms I've been getting, and this is hideous. There's just all these little mites. They look like spiders, but not really. This is not stereotypical spider behavior. They won't just run around aimlessly looking for food. I think I watered too much and flooded out these mites. It's day 112, so not much has changed. Uh, there is a little bit of growth at the bottom for the smaller plants. Shoot System 7 here has seen some decent growth. It's 16 to 17 centimeters tall, I would say. Shoot System number 8 here is 8 to 9 centimeters tall. I stopped watering from the top, so now you don't see any more mushrooms or mites running around. I noticed some growth in the more established medium-sized plants as well. Uh, this one in the center has grown almost as tall as its counterpart uh, right next to it. So they're growing in parallel. It probably came from the same rhizome cutting. A while ago, one of my subscribers, Sean, asked, you know, with all the fungicides I sprayed, this was obviously in reference to an earlier episode, am I going to be able to eat these rhizome cuttings when they form? And the answer is yes, because Taconal um, has an active ingredient, I think it's chloranthal, that is said to decay within one to three months. And if it, the temperature is higher, it will degrade faster. Uh, to make a long story short, there's mushrooms, fungi, and insects teeming in this pot. So I don't think that's an issue. All the compounds have long degraded. And for the honeydew, you don't see dead bees anymore. So I think none of those are concerns for me anymore. It's day 120. So as you can see, Big Bertha hasn't gotten all that much taller. Although if you look very closely at the leaves at the tip, they seem to be getting yellow. So I guess it is gradually getting taller and it's entering the place where you know there's just no shade at all during the day and that's harmful for those leaves and that's why they're kind of yellowish. So again looking at shoot system number seven begins here and goes all the way up here. So now it's about 30 centimeters long. So it grew pretty fast. Shoot system number eight here is above 20 centimeters in height now. So with regards to watering ginger, I've chosen to water from the top. Uh, halfway through the project, I found that ginger has very shallow roots and thus this is more suitable than watering from the bottom. This is especially important for the younger plants. This is something that's been bothering me for a while. There's a white bump, so I'm going to scrape away the sand to investigate. Basically, it's a uh, ungerminated rhizome cutting, one out of two. So if it doesn't have a bud in the beginning, and you bury a small piece underground, nothing's ever going to happen. Day 123. So as you can see, uh, everything looks fine. There's been a little bit more growth. Uh, ginger is a slow growth plant. There's kind of a stem loop structure here. It's just stuck in one of the other leaves. But what really interests me here is this plant seems to have two stems. It's branching off. So none of the other plants have done that. We've had this happen to another plant, but that was after a drought, so to speak, where I didn't water very much at all and the sun was very fierce. But this is a case where I've watered for weeks and one of these plants has started to generate a rhizome, it seems. 